to do them. We're still... We haven't announced them yet. Nobody knows that they're the sponsor. Well, that's, that's something I probably need to know. So just introduce the show and be like, introduce so like, what's going on? I heard you okay. some exciting news. Never mind. We're going to start this over. Hold on. We're getting there. It's always a work in progress. Okay. Take so, two. Take, take two. two. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Custom Culture Broadcast. I am Deuce, and I'm sitting here at Murpho's shop in beautiful Butte, Texas, next to the man himself. Murpho, how are you, sir? Let's start over. Sorry, <laughs> one more time. Mary and Joseph. One more time. Cut. Just do it like normal and say, uh, brought to you by Murpho's Rods and Customs, okay. like blah, blah, blah. So then, so then I can tell Same duty. us about I'm... this big announcement. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. All right. Whatever happens this time, I'll just go with it. <laughs> We could do like a cut afterwards. The problem is it's only been a half a beer. That's the thing. Oh, well, it's 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 up, bro. We're like yeah. two beers into it at this stage. All right. We're going to do this again. Tony, you might have to like, what's the signal for get another beer? Like this? Just slam the bottle down. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Here we go. Take, Take three. Okay. Take three. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Custom Culture Rodcast, brought to you by Murpho's Rod and Custom Shop in beautiful Buda, Texas. I am Double Deuce, sitting here next to the man himself. Murpho, how are you, sir? Doing great, Deuce. Thank you. Thank good, you, sir. Good to see you. Yeah. And Custom Colette, how are you, baby? Hey, hey, hey. Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, happy man. Happy Monday. Yeah, yeah. It All right, was... well, well, tell us what's been going on. Well, how was the weekend? What's been going on here at the shop? Y you know, uh, the shop's going well. We're, we're still like, uh, you know... Deep in alligators and like all that stuff. Cars in here, building man. some cars and and working on our projects. But um, as 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 things go, we've got some really exciting news, and this will be the first time that we get to kind of uh, make Announce the announcement yeah. and and talk about this. But we have um, had our first uh, full time sponsor come along nice. and and decide to uh, awesome. want to do some stuff with the with the broadcast and. Uh, Nick and, and his wife have um, reached out to us from Jenny Shifter, and uh, we were doing some stuff with them before, um, you know, in, in publication days, and it's kind of transitioned to where they are super excited for us, and we're super excited about them, and they have become our premier uh, sponsor of the show. Nice. So uh, from here on out now, we'll um, be partnered with them, and, and we're going to do some collaboration them. stuff. and. What a great story, you know. Um, this is a brand that's been around for a long, long, long time. time. Long time, yeah. And uh, they've got a great story to tell. Uh, so we're going to have them on right quick uh, in an a episode coming up here in a minute and get to uh, hear and learn more all about them. I'm and excited for it. What they're bringing sure. to the table. So well, One thing I really do know excited. about them is that they are American-made. That's right. Every that's piece right. made in the USA, that's which right. is badass. Yeah, yeah, that's way cool. Uh, yes, that's right. That's awesome. Uh, the original and still the best. The original and still the best. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny Shifters. Shifters. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's true, yeah. That's a great tagline. So, you know, we got that going, and um, we're not too uh, far from... Uh, the Lone Star Roundup in our open right house corner, and that'll be our uh, 14th annual open house here in the shop. So cool stuff's uh, happening. We got yeah, a lot of we've got some yeah, great got stuff coming. Good vendors, cool bands, bands, vendors, some burlesque, burlesque photo yes. booth. The photo booth is great, dude. There's some wild stuff that happens, and in we the will photo have booth. drinks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> always, yeah. always a plus. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and all of you guys out there who haven't been to the Lone, the Lone Star Roundup. It is, it got I me, mean, man, years ago, you remember how it started and now it's just, it's Huge. massive. Yeah. It's, it's really cool, man. There's a lot of, a lot of, uh, great cars, a lot of home builds, a lot of, There's you know, guys. There's something out there for everybody. Yeah. For sure. Kids in a garage just doing some stuff. I mean, everything you can think of, man. I'm going to, I'm going to guess it's like probably the largest, uh, old school show in the country now. I know it's way over three thousand cars. Yeah, I mean it's, enter, it's, so. it's huge. I think it's getting bigger and bigger yeah. too. Yeah. Here. So that'll be, sure. that'll be great. And, um, I know you're going to introduce our guest but i was just going to say that he came out and hung out with hung out with us last year at the roundup and i think he's coming again so nice. we're excited we're for gonna that. find out so well, uh, without further ado i was just going to say well, the, well, <laughs> he's like hey that's my part <laughs> i want to introduce the man he has a shop um he just told me to and i'm going to screw this up it's right outside st louis i can't remember the name you told me it was Rolla, Rolla, raleigh 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 yeah Rolla. uh it is Atomic Ranch Customs out of Rolla, right? Is that right? Yes, sir. It makes Missouri. 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 Ah, geez, Missouri. 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 Yeah. I would hear Dan in the yeah. background. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyway, Elrod, say hello, my Elrod. man. Elrod. What's going on, guys? How are you, sir? If I was any better, I'd be you. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's the... Um, no, it's Von Elrod. I thought that it, maybe well, we could get the official Von Elrod in there. Is it the there. Von Elrod or is it just Elrod? It's... it's it's whatever you want to call me. I've been called a lot of things. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I like Elrod. As someone who's also Elrod. been called yeah, a lot man. of things, I'm going to yeah. say I, I like Von Elrod. But, People butcher my name. You know, I'm like, I've been called I like, worse. I like that's anything good. that's got kind of the, you know, the I want to say like the creepy haunted mansion kind of haunted mansion-esque going to it. So Von Elrod, I would say, Von Elrod, okay. is the shit. Yeah. It's actually kind of cool that you said the haunted thing considering cars that he has oh, right. he yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i want to give that to you and you can tell people what you got what you do how you got those cars how did but, it all start yeah i want to know wanna, the beginning i want to hear the whole story on this man how far back do we go, go because go okay back. i'll help you back. we can go way so, back <laughs> so did you grow up in a family that was like your dad or somebody who's into old cars you know it's funny uh, my dad was uh but he got out of it like right after I was born. So, um, so I didn't really grow up with him as that influence, but he had some really super rad stuff back in the seventies. And, um, uh, you know, unfortunately he just got out of it, you know, he moved on. And, uh, so I kind of had to find this on my own really. Do you remember what, um, or what car, or what it was that kind of hooked you that sparked like, it. you know yeah sparked your interest in terms of like oh that thing's so cool you know really actually it wasn't a car it was the art uh -huh. okay um, okay you know yeah as a kid um you know i'd go you know visit my grandparents in the summertime and uh they lived in a small town in missouri and so like me and the neighborhood kids we'd ride our bikes around and you know just terrorize the neighborhood well there was this little supermarket that was just like frozen in time and they had these racks of uh, old T-shirt iron-ons. Well, they had a bunch of Roth stuff, oh. like original Roth stuff in that rack. Uh -huh. You know, I didn't know what it was. Right. I mean, I'm just a little kid, you know, and I'm just like mesmerized by these monsters the coming colors. out of these hot rods. And, ah. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of them were black and white, but still, you know, I mean, it was just like this super rad thing. And so, you know, they were still like 69 cents, you know, from because they'd never marked them up. So... You know, I'd buy them and ride my bike back to my grandma's and she'd iron them on a shirt for me. And that was like, you know, I was just the coolest money. cat in the neighborhood. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. That's hell yeah. Awesome. I don't want to pop And so, anymore. you know, yeah. So, you know, Roth was a huge influence on me. And, uh, you know, so obviously having interest in those monsters and the, the cars that they were in, I started looking mm. into it more. And, um, you know, I, it's funny because, you know, obviously back then, you know, print was everywhere. So, mm. you know, a lot of people were picking up Hot Rod Magazine, you know, Street Rod or stuff like that. Um, I was going to yard sales with my mom and stuff like that. And I was picking up little books because nobody wanted them. And I thought the cars in the little books were way cooler than the stuff I was seeing in, you know, the magazines of the time. You know, it was that it was that time of pro street Easter eggs that just really didn't do a lot for me, you know? Sure. And so like, here was these really rad customs and hot rods in these little books. And I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, you're not So wrong. that was the goal, like yeah. to keep it going. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep my interest. Yeah. So, you know, I was into like the traditional stuff before it was really cool to be into the traditional stuff. And, you know, it was, I just, I'm glad it came back around because it was, it, it's still awesome, right. you know? So, you know, that was, that was really what, what started me. And then, you know, of course, as, as you get older, you know, my, my brother was five years older than me. He was into cars, you know, I mean, growing up, we built model cars and, you know, everything had to have a blower and, you know, just like <laughs> crazy, you know, yeah. like all this crazy stuff. And, uh, you know, so when he turned 16, I was 11 and, you know, we'd just, you know, fix up whatever he could get a hold of. And, you know, like, I remember he had this, like, Chevelle Laguna that was, it was, I mean, kind of a turd, but, you know, it was cool because it's what we had. And, uh, you know, he couldn't afford to jack up the back to get the mags under it. So he would pick up on the back of the car and I would slide under it and slide 
two by fours in the in the coil springs. Like, how can we make this so, cool? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, we were just you know doing whatever, you know, because I mean, you know, him and I were both kind of just self taught. You know, we were just reading magazines, and you know, everybody was pretty good about having how to articles back yeah, then. And they sure, were. you know, we'd read yeah. about it. And we'd go, okay, let's save up some money and buy that and try right. it. That's awesome. So, and then you know. um early 2000s i was you know doing doing enough of it that you know i, I was like Heck, you know i guess i need to do this full time and so i started a shop um and it was called hot rod city it was in doolittle missouri right on route 66 uh you know it was bought this big building and it was really cool had some cool history um, you know, it was originally built in 47 and it was a skating rink. So it was oh, wow. a Doolittle roller rink. Nice. And then, uh, from 47 to 57, it was a roller rink. And then 57, all the locals like told me the history and they're like, Oh, Charlie Rich came in and opened up this club called teen land USA. So it was this teen club. And like, so like bands would come in and play like the platters had played there. Booker T and the MGs played oh, wow. there. Charlie Rich had played there, you know, and it was, you know, it had some really cool history. And so like, you know, when I pressure washed the front of the building, I could actually see the ghost painting of the name and stuff like that on it. And, but, you know, the big thing was, was when I walked in, there was all these like Roth monsters painted on the wall, oh, like from back in the day. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh man, this has got to be a hot rod shop, you know? And, and luckily I was able to actually find out who had painted them and like when they had painted them. Uh, it was a local guy named Ron Ritchie, um, him and a guy named MK John, which is in the hot rod hall of fame for pinstriping. Um, they were from Rolla. They had a car club called the Flamingos and Ron had painted all these uh, monsters on the wall back in the early sixties. Wow. And he's got so, to shop. And now yeah, it's shop. Super cool. That's way cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was my first shop. And then, you know, I closed it down, got burned out, closed it down, um, got away from, you know, doing customer stuff for several years. And, uh, you know, it just kind of snowballed back. You it's like found a black your hole. Again. It sucks you back right, in. Right, right. <laughs> or you found your passion again. And you're like, I, you know, I just can't get away. I got to keep, I got to keep going. I, yeah. I can't, you know, I mean, it's once it's in you, it's in you. So, um, but, you know, this time around, it kind of was one of those deals. I had met uh, Butch Patrick, which is Eddie Munster from the mm -hmm. Munsters. And, you know, he had a couple of Munsters cars. And, you know, we kind of, I brought him in for a car show that I put on. And we would formed this friendship. And he was like, hey, you know, I need my cars worked on. So he's, he was bringing them around. I was working on them. And then, you know, next thing you know, it just kept snowballing. And. He's like, well, I'd really like to have a really nice, like, accurate drag. He takes you know, it and he shows one. everywhere with them. All Like, every time he goes to shows, he's right there with them, if it's not just him. So that's right. Really, that's cool, too. Yeah, you know, so, um, so you know, it just kind of just kept escalating. And, you know, word kind of got around. And, you know, people would ask Butch, they'd go, well, you know, I, I bought this Monsters coach or I bought this Dragula, you know, but it's not right. You know, who can I send it to to make it right? And he go, oh, you got to send it to Elrod. So that's awesome. So I kind of became the Munsters guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the that's Munsters pretty, guy. That's, that's cool. That's that, way cool, though. Yeah, it is. I mean, that you got you have a lot of history, you know, even behind you. I mean, sitting right, it's right behind you. I mean, even talk about that, for instance. Like you fell in love with yeah, the start so, of the little, you know, the little guy coming out with the hand, and there he is, and he's got like history. Yeah, you know the. The car behind me is the Neil Sitters Outlaw. Um, you know, we had it at Lone Star mm -hmm. last year at your guys' booth, which thank oh, you for, for, for having me. That was thank really you awesome. It. Um, you know, that, that car's really, really special to me. Um, you know, you can you can read about it on Custom Rama and stuff, but um, you know how that car came about because I, I never thought I would find a Roth car. I mean, you know, finding a Roth car is just needle in the haystack. It's yeah. You got right. a better chance of winning the lottery, I think, right. at this point. And, uh, you know, so I had, you know, I've got a couple of Roth trikes and, and stuff like that. And I've got a lot of, you know, Roth memorabilia and, and 
you know, things, historical pieces, but I never thought I'd find a car. Well, one morning I got up and it was, it was the weekend and, you know, Emily's still in bed. So I, I sat down on the couch and I, you know, I just do what, what we all do, you know, scroll through Facebook. And, uh, in one of my tea bucket groups, there was a guy holding up this body and I was like, yeah. Oh crap, that's, that's an outlaw body. <laughs> and, uh, so I hit him up and I was like, Hey man, do you want to sell that tea bucket? Did he know what he had? Did he know what he had? Kind well, of. Oh, okay. he did. Okay. Kind of. <laughs> okay. Kind yeah. of. Is a, yeah. you know, <laughs> he's like, well, you know, this isn't just a tea bucket. Like this is a really important car. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it's an outlaw body. Huh. He's like, yeah, but it's, you know, it's got more history than that. And I was like, yeah, that's Neil Sitter's outlaw. And he was like, oh, wow, you really do know. And I was like, yeah, I'm kind of a nerd for this stuff. Like, you know, Roth only made three bodies. Right. There's rumors he made more, but there's only three that were documented. So there's the first one out of the mold, which is this oh, one, wow. actually. I didn't know. Was... And then there was... The, the second and third one, I'm not sure which one Roth ended up using for his car, but then there was another one that ended up, um, it's missing. I'm still searching for it. Uh, I, there are some pictures of it in Phoenix, like back in the 70s at an early time show. Um, but, you know, so th this, this car, its history is that Ed pulled it out of the mold. It was the first time he'd ever done fiberglass, so... You know, trial and error. This car actually literally is the very first fiberglass hot rod. Oh, wow. So, gosh. yeah. And like a lot of people don't realize that when they look at it, you know, they go, oh, yeah, you know, even if they appreciate it as a Roth car, they don't realize that like this is the very first fiberglass hot rod. It started it all right there. Because Ed did it in 57. Nobody had, nobody was doing that. You know, there were sports cars that they were doing out of fiberglass and stuff like that. But, you know, nobody, nobody had done hot rods yet. And so when Ed pulled it out of the mold and some of the crevices, like in the deep spots of the mold, he hadn't got it in there real good. So he wasn't happy with it. And there were some guys down the street from him that were building a fuel altered and they just, they needed a body. They just wanted a body to put on a race car. They didn't care what it was, what kind of shape it was in or anything like that. So they, uh, they ended up buying the body from Ed and it ran in Southern California as the orange peeler was the name of it. So like you could tell there's pictures when we stripped the body down where you could still see orange oh, paint, wow. you know, from when it was the orange peeler. And so then it got sold to a speed shop in Louisiana and they ran it for a while, ended up selling it to another speed shop, which was Shreve Automotive in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, they ran it until the frame just started coming apart and they just threw it in a shed. Well, late sixties were probably like 69, 70, somewhere in there. Um, this kid named Neil Sitters was working at engine shops down in Louisiana and he decided that he wanted to build a race car. So he started asking around and somebody said, Oh, you should go down to Shreve automotive. They've got an old altered in the, shed out back that they'd probably sell you real cheap wow. so he went over there and he said you know stuff was just piled in it, it storage thrown at that all point. over oh it gosh. yeah right and i and i've been able to stay in contact i i got a hold of uh neil and you know we've talked a lot he's told me all the stories and you know one of the stories i had one of the things i asked him was i said did you know what you were looking at when time, you walked when into he, that like, shed? Bink, with all the stuff right and he said, absolutely. He said, my dad owned a hobby shop. He said, I built that model a dozen times. That's cool. but, so the, he said, so I, I knew it the was the outlaw. Did people know? Did they have any clue? I didn't. Yeah. They didn't know. They didn't right. care. It was, it was just, just a tour for them. Car. Oh, yeah. man. So, wow. It's like all these like stories, right? Like yeah, how so, they come, come together. Oh. You're like, whoa. Yeah. And so Neil, um, Neil bought it decided that the chassis was just too bad to build a race car out of again and uh, ended up building a, building a hot rod out of it. And it went through a couple different versions. We restored it back to the first Sweet. version. That's cool. Yeah. 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 That's great. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a really special car to me. Um, 
you know, it, it was it was a labor of love for sure because it's the only Roth car I'll probably ever get to do. Well, and, and that's, that, but it's, it's one. It's the you know, one. That's, it's the one. It's original. One. Yeah, it's yeah. the yeah. first one that Roth ever did. That's insane. so. When you started to restore it, like, what information did you get? Did I mean, like, I know you're super close with Little Daddy. So, I mean, did you get? Yeah, yeah that's. I mean, I'm sure he as some at some point as a kid he was probably, you know, hanging out in it. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, there's a there's there's a great video of us at Redneck Rumble of him sitting in it and telling stories about playing in it, oh, you know, yeah. as a kid cool. because he said, you know, they would like put him in the body as a playpen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so like that's cool. And like, how wild is that? You know, I mean, it's just crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, as far as information, luckily it's a well-documented car. Um, so we were, we had several pictures to go off of Neil still alive. So, you know, I was able to contact him and it was funny because when I, you know, contacted the guy that owned it, Doug Young. I said, uh, you know, I want to buy it. You know, finally he just, des- he decides he's ready to, s- that he, he'll sell it to me. He did some research on me first and, you know, he, cause he's like, I wanted to go to the right person because it's been so neglected. And he said, I don't want to see it sold to somebody that's just going to neglect me, it me, again. Me. <laughs> and, uh, so we, we worked a deal on the body and, uh, he was like, uh, after we got the deal all worked, he's like, you don't want the frame, do you? Oh, uh. I was like, what? you have the original frame? I was like, yeah, I want the frame. He's like, okay, cool. He's like, do you want the axles? I, I like, want all of yeah. them. What else you got? What like, else are you hiding <laughs> in yeah, there? So just jump to the chase. Why aren't you? I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't want to nickel and dime this just, thing. Don't just Get have it. the shell. You have it all. Yeah, he's like, he's like drawing it out, you know. And, and then, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I want all that stuff. Going and so change, like, change. you know, the car has a ton of original oh, parts on it. That's cool. and so, so finally, badass. you know, I get I get the entire chassis bought from him. And I'm like, okay, so what else do you have? Do you like, do you have the motor and transmission? Do you have any of that stuff? And he's like, he's like, no, he's like, all I got left is, uh, the, the three deuce setup with the, uh, stacks that Neil turned when he was a kid. And I was like, well, I'd like to buy that too. And he's like, oh man, yeah, I can't sell that. He's like, I got another project I want to use that on. And you're like, no. And I was like, no dude, like it's, it's it's gotta go with the car. Like they need to stay together. And he was like, yeah, he's like, he's like, well, you know, I really want to put this three deuce on this other car, and I said, I have another three deuce set up. I will That's trade fair. you out. Yeah, there you go. Right, it's all meant oh. to be. It was meant and, to be. And uh, so, yeah, so he was like, he's like, okay, yeah, all right, that'll work, you know. So, so yeah, we, you know, we were really fortunate that we, you know, were able to get as many original parts with the That's car as great. we did. That was amazing. That's like a what labor a story. of love. After all those timing. years and all the different hands. You still had all those original parts. I got chills like crazy, man. Well, yeah, yeah. and thinking just, like how it amazing. started for him in that whole art <laughs> area. And that's what Roth was all about, too. You know what I mean? Like, he was the man. I could just imagine you going, you, yes, I want that. What? What? Why are you telling me? Give me all of it. I want so all it of it. So it didn't stop <laughs> there because you, you have more, you know, of his stuff. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got a I've got a huge Roth collection. Um <laughs> But I knew Ed, you know, Ed and I were friends and, um, you know, I was lucky enough to become good friends with Mm -hmm. his son, Dennis. And, uh, you know, I I just, I have a lot of good memories from childhood on, you know, that are related to Ed. So, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's a special thing for me. That's yeah, I think that makes it even Absolutely, man. Yeah, Yeah, well, it all went to the right guy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, like you said, you were coined earlier, like the Munsters guy, but that that's a badge I think that you should wear, you know, because those cars, that that's that's pretty cool. Because like when, especially one of the Munsters says, this is the cat you got to talk to. You got to go talk to Elrod. You know, he's, yeah. the, he's the one that can do your car up for you. I think that's awesome. I mean, you know, it just gives, I don't want to say gravitas because you're a hell of a builder anyway, but it does. You know, it's like, oh man, this is the dude. If you're going to talk to anybody, talk to this cat. Well, I, you know? I give it to these guys like Elrod and um, uh, who has the Harahata and all the other stuff. No, uh, Dave, no, Dave no. Like yeah, I, Dave I give it to them because they're finding these like once was lost and now restored and you know, and they have these 
awesome pieces. Dave's my biggest He's so great, though. But, like, <laughs> I know he's pulling stuff left and right. I'm like, what? it's never going to stop for him. But it's the it's the passion. It's the love. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then we get to enjoy it now. Yeah. It's not gone. It's not lost. Well, it's, it's, it's the like you said, the art of it. The, like, that car is a piece of art that people... Younger generations never would have seen it had you not restored it and right. built it up. You know what I mean? And it's it just a, to me, right. that's, storage. Yeah, so, exactly. Or it'd be hiding in a damn barn. So like, that's so awesome. Many and other he cars. takes it. He takes it places. He goes to all these shows and like that's the whole. That's the coolest part about it. Mm-hmm. He's not scared to like let people enjoy it. What he's done, you know, that's cool. Well, I mean, that's yeah, that's what you need to do with them. You know, I'd, I'd really like to see the car go to a museum. You know where people could enjoy it more because as you can see behind me, it's, it's stuck in my shop. You know, I mean, I, we, we did a lot of good shows with it last year. You know, we started out, we, we debuted it at the, uh, the moon eyes new year show. Um, and then we went to grand national roadster show and then we come back and went to, we did Detroit autorama with it, uh, starboard show lone star, uh, redneck rumble you know i mean the list goes on we did a lot of shows with it last year and you know literally co- was we'll coast to coast again. with it you know so a lot of people did get to see it but you know i mean I, i'd really like to see it go somewhere where people can enjoy it even more and, and that means the hunt is on for the next absolutely see see, <laughs> see? I, no the, the hunt's not on i found oh. it i'm working oh, on it oh, whoa, whoa, game whoa. changer he just yeah, dropped the ball hand, hand that camera where's it at <laughs> he's working on it he says yeah well uh you know it's funny because actually the car behind the outlaw that you see there has a little history know. too um yeah do tell let's go yeah so there was this uh there was this guy named steve tansy i don't know if you've ever heard of him but he uh a lot of people know his cars. Um, he did the, uh, like that C cab truck called the vending machine. It had like the Coke sides, yeah, yeah. like the Coke machines on the side and stuff. Um, he did a car called the hustler. It was a, like a pool table. And like, he did all these crazy like show cars back in the day when everybody was doing all these, you know, Carl Casper, right. Starbird, Winfield, all these guys were doing all this. <laughs> uh, and he was also a big show promoter on the East coast. Well, um, the roadster I have behind me is actually Steve's last roadster before oh. he died. Wow. Yeah. That's way cool. That is amazing. And yeah. how did, how do how, where do you start? It, it can't just be Facebook. It's gotta be something else. <laughs> like you've got, you have to run into these yeah, people at I some have point. Facebook and I ain't getting the- <laughs> a guy knows a guy and the guy's a guy and then they all connect. It like, yeah, well, you know, like the, like the Tansy car was, um, a guy I had, met and became friends with uh, he actually lived in indianapolis and uh he he come up with it somehow and he hit me up one day and he's like hey man i want to sell this little roadster you know do you want to buy it and here it is behind <laughs> wow. me um you know the other car i'm not going to talk too much about the other car we're going to have to make this another stay away gonna... Dave. No, no. No. <laughs> oh you guys are great you can't have this one um when we're uh face to face i might show you some pictures cool. But you know it'll it'll be it'll be a good thing if I can get it put together. Do you be, do you have be a said good car? He said working on. I do okay, not have okay. said, said car yet. On. Okay, we don't want to jinx that. Then exactly. I didn't realize yeah, we, that. We're yeah. gonna that's put fair. it in the we'll universe. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's why yeah, I'm no, not no, gonna talk you. about yeah, it too yeah, much. Totally, because yeah. we're, we're just gonna put good energy into the universe and pull for you that this goes down. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate that because I want to see it. We do. We do. Yeah, once you got it. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. so cool. So, uh, does this maybe happen before we see you in in a month or whatever it is? Yeah, because we'll see him. I mean, it's, it's counting down. I I doubt that maybe not. This is one of those deals Time. that's going to take. It's going to take a while. Okay. Like, you well, know yeah, I mean? you want to also maybe form a relationship. Yeah, trying to find historic cars is it's it's one of those things. It's it's just really. It's really hard. It's really time consuming. Um, you don't always right. win. Right. Um, you know, the, the uncertainty I've known for about four years about where it was. Okay. <laughs> He's been secret this whole time, you know, but I don't, I don't have, uh, I don't have Bo's pocketbook to right, right, right. Yeah. walk in and, you know, offer, you know, I don't know what they paid for it, whatever they paid for it. It was worth it because, you know, I'm so glad to see it. Right. I'm I'm glad that somebody like Dave and Bo got it because you know it will be 
it will right, be right. treated right. I so, mean, yeah. you know, I, I, I joke about Dave being my competition, but, you know, I, I'm really fortunate to, to know Dave mm -hmm. and, you know, get to go play in his world sometimes. because he brings yeah, yeah. them out. Yeah. Well, you know, he doesn't just have it sitting in a museum at this point. He also takes it to shows, Detroit, right. all the, and this is absolutely the, the great thing about going to these shows and supporting these shows, because this is like, I, I met Elrod and I got to know his whole story and that was going to these shows. So I don't want them to ever stop. Right. So we got to keep it going, supporting other shows. It's for sure. It's it's certainly important they they keep them out yeah, there absolutely. too, because the more people, more kids that see these cars, like you were when you were a kid and you you saw the the artwork sure. by yeah. Rod, where you look over these kids are gonna see these cars and go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and next thing you know, it's imprinted in his mind, and he might be seven or eight, yeah, and when he's sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, he's talking to his old man like going, listen, we gotta find, I don't know how we're gonna do it, we gotta find some, I want to build one of these cars, and next thing you know, you start it off again, and it's. You know, I'm glad that the other fellow is, is doing the same thing you are, where reviving it, keeping it alive, making yeah, sure that people see them. Is. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Well, you know, and it does it does imprint because, um, you know, I have a lot of older people come up and they go, oh, you know, I remember seeing the, so the you know, Outlaw in 67 yeah. at this show like, or bring whatever. Something like, back. You know, They're like, I mean, like, <gasps> they remember that. Like, yes, that's a right. memory that's right, stuck yeah, yeah. with them. And, you know, and I, I've been lucky to get to work you know, on some other historic cars, you know, I got to do some restoration work um, on the little coffin, which was amazing because it's one of my favorite customs of all time. And you know, it's such an iconic car and, you know, and getting to work with Daryl Starbird was, That's was amazing. Cool. You know I mean? Like, Legend. yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's such a good guy. We've, we've formed such a good relationship and uh, you know, it's, it's funny because Daryl's old school, like, if you tell him you know how to do something, you better know you better how to come do with it. it. Oh yeah. 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 Like for <laughs> real. Like, and like, there's no order in parts. Like you make That's everything. Cool. Like I remember we needed like, we needed this uh, spring for a headlight ring on the little coffin. And Daryl just throws me a piece of wire and he's like, make it. <laughs> <laughs> Show me what yeah. you're doing. Like, okay. <laughs> By the way, if you go to the Speedway Museum, it's still the nice. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Yeah. That's right. Nice. Show them. Yes. Get up there one I got what it yeah. takes. I'm going to take a picture of it and send it to you and go, ha, ah, awesome. there it is. Yeah. That's, see, those, those are all awesome experiences. Yeah, well, if you, if you ever get a chance to go to that museum, like the Museum of American Speed is amazing. And uh, actually sitting next to the little coffin is, you know, like that car changed identities a few times on the show circuit so like daryl turned it into the monkey ward delivery after it was a little coffin which was a sedan delivery and he had a whole new nose on it and everything like that and uh i was out at daryl's one day and we're at this in this barn on the back side of his property and i was like daryl that's the nose off the monkey ward delivery laying over there in the mud and he's like Oh yeah, yeah. You know, we took that off back in the seventies <laughs> or whatever. And I was like, uh, "You want me to get that out yeah, there for I'm like, you?" I'm gonna need that. <laughs> so, so I've I've reunited it with the car, so it's on display at the museum That's next cool. to the car. But like too, like back in those days when they were showing, they changed everything to gain points in the system, right? And to like every time change something every year make it different yeah, yeah every year so then you hit the detroits and the yep. chicago's and all the world of wheel honoramas and they would get gain more points you can only show the same car so many times too one yeah right of, absolutely well you know for guys like those guys they were getting paid to send these cars out to shows and you know they'll only pay for the same car right. so many right. times right, right bring something else time yeah. to work mm -hmm. on something else Speaking of, so like when I come to Lone Star, should I bring the outlaw yes, in or something why not? Else? Oh, What do you want to bring? I was thinking about bringing the okay. Tansy car. Do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, in. Bring it. We're bring in. It. Same treatment, same yeah. setup. Yeah, right there at the booth again, bro. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Heck yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and we'll Hello. put it out in front of the... I had such a good time with you guys. Great time too. We'll bring and it back and... Like, Put it in front of the shop at the party. and He was like swamped thing. with people, like, you know, looking at 
what he brought and then we're like swamped doing stuff and I'm like when do we get to like hang out hang out so you'll have to come over make dinner oh that's right that was the shoulder thing I I gotta Uh, I gotta have a redo maybe we should be an outlaw um no dude I was down it was horrible he was there and I gave him I tried I I went there but I wasn't like there there yeah you know and yeah you you were you were pretty miserable like you could tell when you showed up like you were in pain yeah yeah I just was like laying at home y'all and all my buddies are and at he the was show like, and Why am I everything, here right and I like, I'm like, man, I could just be, like, just as hurt at the show as I am here. And so <laughs> I like, he's like, I'm I, leaving. I, I drove no. like, I drove like one armed, with my my arm yeah, between I my legs. Had to go I, I drove I there, there and I got there and like I I toughed it out and I I you tried. Did. You really did. And I came back to the shop. I forgot but all about that. No, I I had to tap out. Like I was out of here by yeah. nine or at the. But this year latest. it's gonna it's the do over. Yeah, yeah. do over. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna have a great I, I time this year, last homie. Year, so I'm glad. Yeah, you'll yes, and yeah, you'll I'm be there. Be Campbell's baseball tournament. That's right. Yeah, so, well, yeah. so it's up to yeah. you. I mean, either way, you're bringing something. So, <laughs> so bringing, that's yeah. happening. Yeah, no, you know what? I, I, I'm a vote for the outlaw just because I didn't I get really to enjoy like... it as much as I would have cared to. Right. But it's your call, Agreed. man. Whichever one, you bring it. We're but down. it is, yeah, your, yeah, your which, call. Yeah. Whichever one you bring, I'm going to crawl all over that thing and look at it. And... Well, you know, it's just like, I don't know. If, again, we go back to that whole, do, does, do people want to see it again? You know, yes. like, is it? I mean, I <laughs> enjoy it thoroughly. I really enjoy it. <laughs> But also like that you, you know, have other things that people haven't seen, you know, or maybe they have, maybe they've come from all over to see, you know, what you're going to bring. I'm just, I'm just stoked one of them's going to be there. I know. So yeah. it's all good. He's like, should I bring but, one? Yes, you should. <laughs> well, what's you your should. gut, dude? Well, how do you feel? Yeah. What are you feeling? You know, I mean, like you can I bring said, both, I, right? I, I was kind of thinking this. How cool would that be? <laughs> Dan, Dan. No, I've seen your trailer. Dan's I don't have that trailer. So can help. Dan, you're coming with. <laughs> yeah, awesome. bring Dan. Dan. Yeah. I'm trying to get Dan. Yeah, Come totally. Dan. Come on, Dan. Missouri Dan. So it's working with Elrod. That's way do, cool. Do too. you feel like you just feel like um, you know, you have the other car, it's like different and had wasn't at the show last year and like it'd be cool to uh kind of do that. Yeah, yeah totally. You know. Whatever you're feeling, we're we're yeah. for it. And we're, we're appreciative too, because we enjoy your company and your yes, cars that's right there was a guy um in branson missouri he has the celebrity car museum and we were uh butch and i were doing a show down there you know we were doing an appearance and this guy comes by he looks at the he looks at the drag he looks like man you really got an eye for this stuff and i was like thanks i try you know <laughs> like i'm you know i just kind of kind of nerd out about it and he's like i'd like you to come by the museum and uh you know next thing you know we're we're restoring TV and movie cars for this guy. A few years ago, my son's 16 now, my oldest, when he was like 11 or 12, they did Little League World Series there in Branson, and their team was playing, and I got to go by that museum and check it out, and that thing's got, I mean, I got, I'm not even, I got chills even oh, talking about it. Oh, so you've been to it. this museum. Oh, oh. And it has everything, It's or? got just, it's amazing. Oh, this, this guy has yeah. Is it almost like the um, Larry Claremont collection? He's got the Golden Sahara, he's got... All, he's got the bubble top. Is it? No, this guy specializes in TV oh, okay. movie that, cars. That's so like, cool. that's, Dude, that's it's, all he does. Going walking in there was li- it's literally you're walking back in time. It's weird. Like it was so red. I, I turn around and you see these cars like oh. And you guys know me. I immediately oh. He was probably stuck. And yeah, I geek out on all that stuff. Like holy crap! And I'm going all around it. And and this that is some. Old gal was there doing something, and she just kept walking by, like, kind of giggling, going, you know, watching me freak out and looking at everything. But, yeah, it's badass, that place. Right now, um, you can't see it. On the other side of my screen is uh, John Cena's 67 El Camino from uh, Fast X. Okay. Oh, nice. We're restoring four of those El Caminos wow. for that guy. Wow. Um, because, you know, obviously when they make a movie, you have to have multiple cars. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think they had 12 of those to make the movie and only five of them survived. You know, the rest of them all got blown up and <laughs> rolled and trashed and everything. So so we're restoring those cars. Um, you know, and he called me. He called me day before yesterday and he's like, he's like, hey, you know, I, I know I'm jumping the gun here. He's like, but uh I'd really like to get my interceptor in oh. and get it, you know, freshened up. And I was like, I was like, whoa, wait, wait, what do you mean interceptor? And he's like, you Mad know, the, the Mad Max interceptor. Oh. 
And I was like, I was like, you you had the Mad Max Interceptor? And he's like, yeah, I've, I've got the one from the first movie. He's like, oh, are awesome. you down for that? And I was like, yeah, man, I'm down well, for that. Well, I hope he's still coming now. He's when you get words. that car, let us know. I'm going to fly to Missouri, boy. I just want to walk around it. That That's is crazy. so awesome. Hey, come on, come on up, man. We'll... We'll go through the drive through it. <laughs> oh, that would be a great oh, no. video, dude. It's like, oh like a kid. Gosh. Like the little pig Wilbur. He's like, wee. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Yeah. I took a bunch of my buddies to Sonic one day in the Munsters <laughs> coach. So, you know. That's so like, hey. Imagine everybody just going, what the? <laughs> but he enjoys it. He enjoys them, too. Like I said, everybody gets to enjoy them. Yeah. We got to get out there sometime for sure. Yeah. Oh. Because I'm sure your shop has some really cool open, stuff. Open invitation. How, uh, how far are you from Branson? Two and a half hours, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So it's yeah, not fun. it's not horrible. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yeah, we have another mission in Branson coming soon. That is true. We do. Yeah. So we'll let you oh, know you? as we're coming out. So you have a couple days to <laughs> hit your <laughs> doorstep. We're yeah, here. Yeah, that's the You know, like... Yeah, hit me up. Uh, you know, maybe I'll meet you guys down there and take oh, you to the museum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that would be so yeah, cool. Yeah, we'll definitely let you know when we're when we're doing that. Yeah, yeah. I'm lucky. Yeah. Cool. So, is that uh, is that kind of like what's consuming you right now? Is working on the restos and 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 that? Yeah, we're building another monsters coach. Um, you know, and and then we've got we've got a few other projects going. Like I said, you know, we've got the John Cena El Camino's going. Uh, we've got a van that we're working on. Um, you know, I mean, there's there's tons of projects and not enough hours in the day. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. Yeah, but it's I can see that your passion is back, and you're back in it. So that's awesome. Absolutely, absolutely. You, you know, and another thing is, it's you you guys know from being in a shop, it's so hard to find help. You know, I'm so lucky to have Dan with me now, and and uh, you know because it's. It's it's difficult to find somebody that's, you know, qualified and has an attention right, right. to detail. Really difficult to so, find. You know, I mean, those things yeah. in the human. I've had a lot of guys, you know, work with me for a while, and you know, um, go on and do their own thing and everything like that. And I, you know, I, I always tell everybody, I'm like, you know, they go, "Oh, you did a great job on the outlaw," or "You did a great job on this," and I, I never take full credit for sure. anything that's because awesome. it yeah, takes a village. Yeah. Right. Kudos to you, you for know, that one. Yeah. Well, but you got a good one there with with you know, Dan, I mean, and a solid dude that's like yeah, you know he's like got passion too on on passion. top of the game. So you, yeah, you just walk back. Yeah, in. Yeah, no, he's yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dan, Dan, uh, Dan guy, he's all right. We uh, like Dan. We'll keep him around for a while. He's great. He's great. But that's awesome though that you two club on that. Yeah. And he's a hard worker. He really is. He's a go getter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was uh, I was I was surprised when he. Uh, when he wanted to come up and work with me, you know, because I'm like, man, you got your own shop. Why do you want to, why do you want to do this? And he's like, you're doing <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. That, yeah. there's no better reason <laughs> than that right there. Yeah. Cause you're kicking out some cool shit and I'm ready to play. You yeah. Know? When you're into what you're doing it, it feels different. You exactly. Know? That's awesome. <laughs> and, you know, and I've reached a point where I'm, I'm selective about what I, what I do and what I let into the shop, you know, because I don't, you know, I don't want to just do, you know, Joe Bob's 72 Chevelle, you know, I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not what we do. It's not your jam. No. Hey! Dan! Are you still standing? Do you have fingertips? Oh, no. It's, oh, it's okay. Now we're, yeah. Easy we're, sand. We're going to. We're going to. Fix and seams. <laughs> Slaying. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a crazy one. Like, so the El Camino, like. I don't know if you've seen that movie Fast X or not, but like the this El Camino has like this crazy exo, exoskeleton over the whole thing, so you can't open the doors. So they had to cut the the roofs out of the cars so you could get in and out of them. Well, then when they like started making the toys, they did like a street version of it without the cage and stuff on it. And so the guy that owns the museum, he's like, "Well, you know, I want." I want both versions. They made toys of this. Like I want both versions. So, you know, we got this El Camino with, yeah. Dan's oh, hand to me, so. oh, okay. Cause I was like, I've never, oh, seen, the movie. Yeah. I've never seen the movie. So I'm trying to visualize uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. it's gotcha, a gotcha, yeah. Okay. That was good. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, here he comes with the, with the, have all the toys. The Did he it, guy like, bring the toys with? Oh, oh there's man. the whole thing. Yeah. So that's how they were getting in and out of that thing during the filming. That's why they make 
That's, that's how they get that's in movie car. car, right? Yeah, that's movie life. Sunroofs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. What's it, like the guy's like? He's like, "What do we do with that?" And I'm like, "Uh, <laughs> what we either put a sunroof in it, or uh, <laughs> we got to like cut the roof off and put a whole new roof on." Like a and uh, so that was that was weird. Dan and I were like cutting this cutting this roof off this car and like welding it back on, and we're like, now "What? I this." Feels so unnatural <laughs> to not chop right, a car yeah. with yeah. off of it. Yeah. Like it was. yeah, it's weird, right? I can barely. Yeah, yeah. We, we Dan said he said we you know we were just going to reskin it because a lot of people go why didn't you just replace the skin? First off, they don't make a reproduction hood for sixty four to sixty seven El Caminos, and second off, when we started like actually getting into it and getting ready to cut the skin off, there was like an inch of bondo oh, all the way boy, around the roof. Yeah. Like there, there was no metal. Yeah. It was Bondo. <laughs> Those are sculptors. Yeah, yeah, someone had played with that before. <laughs> Whoever did it did a really good job. They had us fooled because, like, usually I can spot Bondo, but like they did, they were, yeah, they were yeah. craftsmen, <laughs> sculptors, sculptors. Yeah, yeah, that's talent too. Some, uh, some uh, Wando Picassos. <laughs> <laughs> are they all four going to be identical like two with cages two like like the street versions or what do you with all four of them so actually only one of them will get the uh get the okay. cage back and that'll go into the museum um the others will be street versions because he he wants to keep one of the street versions and, and then sell the other two after they're uh -huh. all completed obviously a car with a huge cage and cannons and depth charges and <laughs> Like all this crazy shit on the side is like so, going to be hard yeah, to sell. I want to see that. that? Museum, Not super see. streetable, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Well, yeah. Good fun. Yeah. We're excited to see you in, yeah. uh, I think it's about a, a month from right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, 12? one month. Yeah. yeah. 19th, 20th. 19th, 20th. That's it. Yeah. yeah. The week after. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and he's man, coming. Not a long and he's time. bringing us something. He didn't bring really us something. He's bringing us He's surprise. bringing something. Yeah. But it's going to be right next to the booth, so that's going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah, come see it at the Lone yeah. Star Roundup. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah it's and the after party. Open and, house. You know, and I, I have to say that, like, last year was my first year doing the Roundup. And out of all the shows I did, it was one of my favorite shows. Like, I mean, you, you know, Grand that. National's awesome, you know, and everything like that. But I think I had more fun at the Roundup because it was just it's more of a laid say, back it really atmosphere. is kind of more just kind of laid back yeah well i think that, that because of one here in texas a lot of those builders they're just average joes doing shit in their garage and bringing it out there and they just want to talk you know they, yeah. they want to talk about the cars people are going hey man nice ride man sweet you know and just they bullshitting with each other and carrying on man yeah. it's just it's a good vibe yeah it is a good vibe yeah yeah well, not to mention the sideshow that was at the tent. <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. That's a good vibe, too. Yeah, yeah it was. It was a great vibe. It just made it better. All right, all right. Hey, man, if people want to get a hold of you, give us all of your skinnies, all of your, the Facebooks, your number, all the stuff. That all the things. Needs wants to get a hold of you and do whatever it is. Follow you know what I mean? Yeah. Get a hold not of you. That he follow needs you. Any more work? No, but you in, never but know. We need your. Stuff. Someone's gonna find that that missing car and give you a shout. Going okay. Look, here's the deal. If you find the missing car, call me. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. we're about oh, Rod. four yes. years booked out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but people want to follow what you're doing, man. How can they do that? Yeah. So Instagram, uh, Von Elrod Original. Um, you know, as far as Facebook, I kind of keep that more personal. I don't do as much of the business stuff on there. I mean, obviously you can follow me on there too. It's, it's Brandon Von Elrod, but if you want to see what we're doing at the shop and stuff, it's definitely uh Von Elrod original. Nice. On Instagram. Nice. It's good stuff. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and hearing the stories about these cars, man. I, I absolutely love it, man. And was... thank you for preserving the history on everything too. Yeah. For real. That's absolutely. Awesome. And I can't wait to see. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait Thank to see you. whatever whatever it is you're bringing, whether it be the outlaw or whatever else you're bringing, man. I can't wait to I'm see it in about a month or so. You know, I kind of had my mind made up, but now I'm second guessing it. So. Something's coming. <laughs> something's coming. <laughs> I need to get something registered, so I, I can, you know we'll figure it out. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Thank you for letting people, you know, know you and and how cool you are and the stuff that you have, and we appreciate you for sure. And we're glad Absolutely, you're going to be coming out. Man. Great yeah, I appreciate show. you guys. So, you know, thanks for having me on. Um, you know, I mean, it's really an honor because, 
you guys have a lot of great people on and you know I you're one kinda, of those people <laughs> we're putting you in great people status people. you are yeah. you're, you're holding down history you're in the great people boat so awesome sure Dan. i appreciate yeah. you thank you yeah. for real yeah bro yeah. thank you very much man you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon thank very, you all right thanks very, guys um very much looking forward to hanging out brother absolutely Absolutely. See you soon. Absolutely. All right, you all. Wait, man. What a great show. Thank you guys for listening to the Custom Culture Rodcast brought to you by Murphy's Rod and Custom Shop and the original and still the best Jenny, Jenny Shifters. Shifters, our first sponsor. We love you guys. Yeah. Thank you again. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell. All right. Thanks again, y'all. Good night. Good night. Good night.